We hear the stories of the saints, many who have been martyred, such stories of, of courage, such stories of grace have been given. And yet we hear in the gospel reading today, the man who came to Christ, who asked him, what must I do to have salvation? What must I do to be saved? Uh, Christ tells him very simply, knowing his heart, he tells him, well, you've heard the commandments, you follow them. He gives him a, a synopsis of the commandments. You know, do not murder, do not, do not steal. Uh, honor thy father and thy mother. And this, the, the man says to him, says, yes, 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 this I know, this I know, and this I have kept even from my, from my youth. And Jesus, noting the moment, came with the truth that obliterated the man's understanding. The man, for, for Christ told the man, says, you must go and sell everything that you own and come and follow me. Well, the man was a very rich man. He had many possessions. Such would be difficult for him. Even if we look today, the man, that rich man who has many possessions and has become accustomed to this certain kind of life would find it very, very most difficult to give up all of that and to follow Christ. Well, let's look at this. In our human minds, we say, I have all these things, all these comforts. I have a good home, a good car. I have a good family. I have these, these wonderful blessings that have been given to me. Why should I give them up? What is Jesus promising me? Well, he's promising me this. Sure, uh, he's promising me uh, a hard life and, and probably martyrdom at the end. What well, is true? He does promise a martyrdom. He promises a martyrdom for every single one of us as Christians. Come and follow me. Which isn't just simply to say, you know, divest yourself of everything that you own and just follow me. It means to sell all that you own, get rid of your possessions, get rid of those things that have possessed you even from your youth, get rid of those things that you have put upon yourselves as these old rags. Take them off, shed them off. Become a martyr for Christ. Martyrdom, there's so many different kinds of martyrdom. The kind that Christ was speaking to, but this, this man must become a martyr to die to the things of this world and to come to follow him which he shall lead you into the next world. The things about it is, is that when your body lays in that coffin, nothing that you have, nothing that you have acquired, nothing that you have possessed is going to go with you. When the lid is closed upon that coffin and you are placed into the earth, your body there to await the great judgment. She said, you can't take gold with you. You can't drive a car into the gates of heaven. You cannot um, pay your way into heaven. And so these are the things to understand as a Christian, we have now come into the to the realm of understanding what true reality means. And the true reality of the situation is, is that none of these things matter save that which is stored up in heaven. St. Lawrence, when he was called to give, the, uh, to give a reckoning of, of the valuables of the church, the greatest things in the church, what he did was he begged for a day. And, and, and the governor gave him the day that he required. And you got to remember, Pope Sixtus had already been, had been killed at this point. Now, what Lawrence did was he, he made sure that all the, all the, all the things that were, were valuable as far as the, uh, the earthly realm were taken care of, and they were taken out of the church. Then he went out into the city. He gathered, the pump, he gathered all of the sick, all of the poor, all of the hungry, all of those who were the dregs of society and the worst of the worst, those who were there, and he put them into the church and the governor came to, to get the riches of the church. When he came, he opened the door and he put his hands up and he looked at all these who were gathered here in the hall and he said, these, these, the greatest treasures of the church. The governor did not see the humor in this. He did not see the truth in this either. You see, every stone in this temple could be taken apart, stone by stone, brick by brick, 
Every single thing that stands upon the foundation of this can be leveled, and yet the greatest treasure has not been touched. So the greatest treasure of the church remains the church which comes to enter into this temple to worship the Lord our God and to give him homage, to pay him the worship that is due to him, the liturgy, the work of the people. This is where we come. You, now, dear children, you are the greatest treasure to the church. Understand that. As you walk out from this place, wherever you walk, let there be a prayer upon your lips that you may constantly supplicate to God that the, the great pearl, the pearl of great price that has been given to you, that you may impart that to those who would yet come to believe and possess it as well. The church travels You are his hands and feet. If we do not profess, if we do not take up our cross and follow Christ, what good are we? The church has not been called into the world to be silent, dear ones. It has not been called into the world to be to be uh, uh, to cower in fear at what men may do to us. It's not been called into the world to bear a silent testimony. His testimony is the witness of nothing less than the witness of the saints that have given to God that which may come. But we stand as a speaking and a singing witness to the glory of God. And so, let not your hearts be troubled, let not your voices be silent, and let not your feet be still, let not your hands be idle. There's work to do. Christ said to the man, sell all that you own. Get rid of those things that, that, that possess you. In other words, I'm telling you that that uh, he knew the heart of the man who was speaking to him because he was a rich man, that he would never sell that which he owned. And yet, he wasn't simply saying, saying sell all that you own, but he's saying that do not be possessed by that which possesses you. Do not be possessed by your possessions. We don't have to go out and sell everything that we own. But... Our minds must be able to treat our possessions as if they were just so much rubbish. One thing that matters, one possession that matters, is that which Christ has given you. And it's the only thing that matters. Through that, everything else may become blessed. That is the only thing. The one thing needed when we meet our Creator. 